Hello everyone! So today I will be reviewing a recent book I read called The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. This book is marketed as a Slytherin romance and I definitely agree. So I will be giving a spoiler-free and spoilery review of the book, starting with a spoiler-free review which you can tell by the giant spoiler-free text at the top of the video. I'll let you guys know when I will start talking about any spoilers, which will also be indicated by giant text. I also have timestamps below if you want to skip the spoiler-free or spoilery parts. If you stick around to the end, I'll also be showing a few of my favorite quotes from the book so you can see if you want to read it or not. Okay, on to the review! So, The Shadows Between Us follows Alessandra Stathos, the 18-year-old daughter of a nobleman who has bigger dreams and even bigger goals. She plans to seduce, marry, and then kill the Shadow King to take his kingdom. Alessandra has got some competition, though, because she's not the only one who wants to kill the Shadow King. The Shadow King is this mysterious monarch of the kingdom who can control shadows, and no one really knows that much about him, except that his parents, the previous monarchs, were killed a short time ago. We get to follow Alessandra as she manipulates her way into the palace, seeing how she influences others and navigates life in a crowd of people that don't all necessarily want her. Does Alessandra's scheming pay off? Does she become the ruling queen of the kingdom? Or does she give her heart to the king? This book takes place in a medieval setting, which isn't really fantasy except for the king's powers. However, despite the novel taking place in the past, it still features the LGBTQ plus community, mainly as side characters though. I personally really like and appreciate novels that take place in settings reminiscent of the past, but still feature aspects of modern rights that we have in today's world, like when having female knights in the guard is normal or in this situation. So I thought that that was cool. In the book, it's common for guys to be with guys and for girls to be with girls. However, the book does explore themes of women's rights, since it's considered improper for a woman to be with a man before marriage in the novel society. Our protagonist, or maybe an anti-hero is a better word for her, does not care about what society thinks though, and we see that she has unapologetically taken on multiple lovers before beginning her plan to kill the Shadow King. Basically, Alessandra has to find a way to seduce the king, marry the king, and then kill the king, all while looking innocent, navigating around the king's council which is full of advisors that all have their own opinions on her, avoiding her previous lovers and making sure that no one knows about them, stopping her father and older sister from getting in the way of her plans, and, above all, making sure that no one finds out that she killed her first lover, Hector Galanus. Which isn't a spoiler because she literally talks about it in the first page of the book, which was a great way to reel me in, by the way. Another theme that is also explored is classism, which is done so through a few side characters and through the main character herself. Alessandra fights tooth and nail, using her wits to rise through the social ranks, and using her beauty if she needs to as well, all for the goal of killing the Shadow King. This book features a lot of mystery and intrigue, mainly because Alessandra has to keep the king alive until she can convince him to marry her and get him to propose, which is the whole seducing part of her plan. However, there's a small wrench thrown in there, which is that someone, or something, is trying to kill the king. And she kind of needs him alive to marry him and then become queen. Then she can kill him. I cannot tell you guys how refreshing it was to read about a female main character that is intelligent and cunning and smart and is unabashedly so. And while she is not afraid of using force to get what she wants, it was just really fascinating to see her manipulate people into getting what she wants instead. I didn't know just how badly I needed to read about a heroine slash anti-hero slash protagonist who's actually smart and who will manipulate whoever she wants whenever she wants. I felt bad whenever she manipulates people who aren't necessarily bad people, just people who are in her way at the moment, but when she actually does manipulate people who are annoying, I cannot tell you guys how satisfying those moments in the book are, especially when those people realize that she just checkmated them and that they have no more moves to play. Isn't it just so much fun watching your enemies crash and burn? Uh, I have concerns. Anyways, I would rate this book 4 stars because while it was an amazing read and probably one of the best books I've read this year, I have some thoughts. First off, I have some issues and questions about the ending, which was definitely a plot twist I didn't see coming, but it left me wanting more. Not in a, wow, I can't wait for the next book kind of way, because I believe that this is a standalone, but in a, wait, that's it? There has to be more. I have so many questions, kind of way. But the main antagonist in the novel just kind of came out of left field, in my opinion, and I wanted to know more about their motive for their actions, which was explained, but not in depth. I also wish that when the final scene between the antagonist and the characters in this book occurred, there was more action exposition. The final scenes of the book seemed to occur really fast, and I felt like the author could have drawn out the tension a bit more to make the scene more enjoyable. 
The ending was still a great ending, and I was very happy with it, and thought it was a great conclusion to the novel, just wish that it was a bit longer. Alessandra was so much fun to read about. Not only is she unapologetic for the murder she committed, which is a little concerning, she, like a natural Slytherin, is really good at plotting, especially when it comes to furthering her ambition, which is to become a queen. It was so interesting to read about her plans and seeing them work as she makes her way up the social ladder and get better status positions in the book. That being said, she's not perfect. When some of her schemes do go awry, she doesn't necessarily have a plan B or C, and instead has a tendency to make snap decisions in the book, out of anger or sadness, which is human. Her character growth was amazing to read, though. She starts off as this woman who wants power, has no female friendships, and looks out for herself only, and she becomes so much more than that by the end of the book. Also, looking at her just as a person, putting the whole murder thing aside, that's a pretty big thing to put aside. I thought that she was a pretty cool person. Her main hobby is sewing, which I thought was a refreshing change from the normal hobby of any YA female main character. Reading. Have you guys noticed that, by the way? That every YA female protagonist's main hobby is reading? It doesn't matter if they're a knight or a superhero or a normal teenager. They just read? Isn't your main hobby reading? Yes, but I mean, I have other hobbies. Like? Well, outside of reading, my other hobby is, is it D&D? No, no, I was not going to say D&D. Also, D&D is a way of life, not a hobby, so you're wrong. Anyways, my hobbies are beside the point. I just thought that it was cool to see a main character have a hobby outside of the norm, and she frequently visits her hobby throughout the book. I was kind of waiting for Alessandra to make a dress that would correlate to her plan of killing the king. Like, maybe she would make a dress with various pockets to hide poison, or hide a knife, but no, she just makes dresses to look pretty, which I guess is nice too since she does use her beauty to manipulate a lot of the guys. Overall, I thought that this was a very cute Slytherin romance, as both Alessandra and her main love interest would undoubtedly be sorted into Slytherin. I would recommend this book to anyone who needs to see some Slytherin representation right now in their life, likes murder mysteries, women being unapologetically smarter than other people in the room and not playing down their smartness for the sake of others, and really petty comebacks. Okay, so that's all I got for the non-spoiler part of the review. On to spoilers, so if you want to avoid them, bye for now guys. If you want to not see spoilers but do want to check out some of my favorite quotes from the book, check out the timestamps below to skip to the ending. Now on to the spoilers. Okay, so that reveal of Callias' older brother actually being alive and that Leandros was actually Xanthos was a plot twist I did not see coming. I definitely thought that this book had a great murder mystery since Alessandra and Callias were trying to find out who the assassin was that killed Callias' parents and also was trying to kill him. I really wish that Trisha Levenseller went more in depth about how Callias' parents weren't who he thought they were and that his dad used to beat up his older brother because Xanthos wasn't born with the shadow curse. Of course, nothing justifies murder, but it made me understand Xanthos' motive for killing his father, the previous king. But I don't understand why he killed his mother. It seemed like his mother didn't know about the abuse, which makes me wonder why he didn't bring it up to his mom, who I think he actually loved. I also didn't understand why Vasco was the one to save Xanthos, and why Vasco considers Xanthos to be the one true king. Do they have history together? That wasn't mentioned in the book. That was my one issue with the ending. I definitely suspected that Leandros was not a good guy, mainly because I did not believe for a second that the one guy that Alessandra liked but ultimately rejected was okay with the rejection. Literally, Alessandra rejects Myron, and he doesn't take it well. She rejects Orin, and he doesn't take it well. And she rejects Leandros, who then reveals that he's Xanthos and tries to kill Callias. I also thought it was weird that Callias pardoned Alessandra immediately. Like, Alessandra is smart and cunning and all, but her motive for killing Hector was literally, you broke my heart and used me. Which is an awful thing to do, so I understand where she's coming from, but it doesn't justify his murder. She then proceeds to kill Xanthos, which is a pretty cool scene, especially since he was all like, I know you, you're not a killer you won't kill me. And she was like, bet. And killed him. I don't know. I personally consider Callias and Alessandra to be Slytherins, mainly because of their ambition and cunning, and the fact that both of them are reluctant to let others into their friend circle unless they really trust them. Not really because both of them are pretty much on board for murder as a means to get rid of their enemies. I love that Rhoda and Hestia both got their happy endings, and that Hestia learned to be her own person, and that mimicking other women that are desired by men in order to get a man yourself will only make that man fall in love with a fake version of you and not the real you. I'm also happy that Rhoda basically says screw you to societal standards and decided to court her butler slash employee even though he was of a lower social status than her. Anyways, if you like this review, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Also, make sure to leave a comment or recommend any of your favorite books. Keep watching to see some of my favorite quotes from the book. Bye guys!